So I want to start a video today with a little bit of analogies. I mean, it's a story I have heard on the internet and it's kind of stuck. Let's just take the cup of water that you super into it. The cup is full of water and it doesn't really matter much about the, the weight, the size that it has because how heavy it is going to feel to me depends on how long I hold it up for. For the first two seconds, it's kind of piece of cake because I can easily breeze through it without much effort. But then we kind of move into, you know, the state that I'm holding up it for, for a couple of minutes. I'm starting to shake because the cup is, is going to start a little bit heavier in my hand. I'm trying to push through and hold it up for a little bit longer. But my arm is starting to feel a bit paralyzed and after all, I probably succumb to the weight of the cup. And so similar things happen as well in our life for any difficulties, fears, worries, or even resistance we experience. It's just like the cup that we hold on to these thoughts and feelings for the moment. It doesn't really matter that much if you neglect them at the beginning, but if you hold on to them for a, bit of, for a little bit longer still, they may start to wait on us and overwhelm us. And being wondering, you know, what kind of topics in the next video, sitting alone in, in my cozy rooms, I mean, I think that the story itself is simple and beautiful. The reason for that, because if I can actually, you know, use this lens to see my creativity's problems, maybe it can offer me some kind of solutions. And yet it is. The problems with our creativity is the more we are into finishing our work, realizing our ideas, the more tempting resistance we need to concur. And the biggest trap that I'm mostly run into is wasting hours and hours sitting in front of the computers, wondering what stories I should read, where I should start, how can I turn it into masterpiece, and I take a lot of people ideas into considerations, and I'm really wondering that how people are gonna look me through these videos. But the reality is, the paper is still white, and there's no obvious motivations for me to write. It's not because I don't know what I want to write. It's not because I don't know or I'm not capable of doing it. Exactly, I have the fears. A fear that everything that first that I first jot down will be imperfect. Stephen Pressfield once said that there's a secret that real writers know and wannabe writers don't. It's not the writing part that hard. What heart is sitting out to write? In the book, The World of Art, Pressfield defined that most of us have two lives, the life we live and a life within us. Between the two, stand resistant. Or, you know, that means that the things that are holding us back between where we are right now and where we want to be is exactly resistant as Pressfield defined, or I like to call it like a little monster inside of every single individual in this life. Have you ever wanted to become eminent writers, but you haven't exerted your best endeavors to write down your ideas? Have you ever wanted to become illustrious entrepreneurs, but you are not willing to understand selling and accounting numbers? Or have you ever wished to become successful authors, but the motivations for you is always excuses for you to rock? If those thoughts have ever sprinted in into your mind, congratulations. Maybe you are a victim of these demons. Millions and millions of people has been devastated day in, day out. Their dream, their burning desires inside of them has been wiped out completely by this demon. So before we find a solution to put the cup down, we should accept and be aware of, the, of their resistance and so that we can actually find the solutions to deal with them rather than just ignoring and extracting them. Remember, don't expect what you don't expect. Okay, so let's get ready with the journeys right now. I wanna give you a simple challenge. 
just pause the videos and look surrounding yourself and say where you can find the red colors. It doesn't matter clothes, uh, things or anything that you can find at this moment. I don't care. Anything you can see through your eyes, just count on it. Just do it because I will show you the miracle. I will wait for three seconds. Three, two, one. Perfect. I appreciate that. So tell me how many red colors do you find in your place right now? Maybe one, maybe two, or maybe five, or maybe ten. Give me the numbers. Incredible, my friends. Exactly, you only see the red colors when I told you to look at the red. This happened the same thing in our life. When someone in our life always remind us the value and its grave importance of red colors, your world will become red. But if you surround yourself with negativities, I mean, the BMW is not going to be the car, but it's standing for like bitching, moaning, and whining environment. You automatically feed your demons every single day. These demons makes us as a victims of this life. We choose to live the rest of our life as a victims. We are a victim of being late because it's the demon said that it's okay to be late a couple of times. We are a victim of procrastination and laziness because it's made up the story that it's perfectly okay to postpone because we have a lot of time. And let me ask you this. Have you ever finished 50% of the progress you made so far? And then you say to yourself, you want to take a small break and always remind yourself how important it is to come back after a small relaxations. But then you start to think about other trivial things and then the procrastination coming in. Have you ever in that state before? I am so many times that I cannot count on it. And then I realize it's how important it is with this quote that a cluttered mind makes for a cluttered life. Don't ever underestimate this demon. It will start yourself with tomorrow I would do it. And then maybe it's too hard for me. And then I cannot do it. The moment you choose to sign a deal with the resistance, you already have lost yourself. You will deep dive crazily in social medias like Facebook, YouTube, Instagram. You start binging on sweet meat and a bunch of things that you love, starting with, starting with masturbations or even drugs or heroin. However, the killing part is that every single thing in our life become reasonable because it starts to resonate with you that you deserve those tragedies. In order to keep up trap forever, this demon also go an extra mind to recommend that the only way to get out of this is to waiting for the perfect moment. Maybe tomorrow, but not now. But my friends, the past give us the identities, the futures hold the promise of Salvations or fulfillment depends on what you're looking for in life, but both are illusions. Would you agree with me that if your mind carry a heavy burden of the past, you will experience the same things? This is because the past perpetuates itself through lack of present. A few words to those who was being trapped right now. I know it's painful to admit the truth, but it's the right things to do. I know what it looks like to be in the dark because I have already in your shoes. However, confronting is not ending. It's just another chance for you to see yourself from different angles, to understand and to grow. I firmly believe that pain was born for growing, not suffering. The moment you say you are perfect, you're just trending water in your life, maybe now, maybe the future. At the end of the road, we can see a fresh new beginning or a powering tragedies. It just depends on what we want in life and what we want to look at. What a caterpillars call at the end of the world, we call part of life. That is not my word, but from Eckhart Tolle, from the power of now. Think about the price, the costing price that you gotta pay for those meaningless fulfillment. How does that gonna affect your mom, your dad, your loved one, or even your future? Maybe now, maybe 10 years from now, or even 50 years from now, 
in the same room that you listen to this? Exactly how much longer can you afford yourself to live the lifestyle knowing that it's going to burden your future? It's not your near future, but it's much, much far from future. What was your life going to look like? Are you going to be happy after all? If not now, then when? You are the only one who can answer it. And I believe in you. In Steve Jobs' biography, there's a part that I'm super into, and I think it's really profound to share with you guys. Steve Jobs said that some people say give customer what they want, but that's not my approach. Our job is to figure it out what they are going to want before they do. I think Henry Ford once said that if I ask customer what they want, they would have told me a faster horse. People don't know what they want until we show it to them. That's why I never rely on market research. Our task is to read things that are not yet on the paper. So why I bring that up? Because that is, that's precisely the solutions to eradicate this demon once and forever. And there is two steps. The first is destroy your own story. The second, tell yourself a new story. If you have asked yourself those questions and 100% think about the answer. Congratulations, you have relayed more pains to the actions. We are a creature of habit. We love comfort and hate pain. Okay. And the second step is simple: just upgrade your environment. It's not necessary physical like locations. You can actually doing that on a virtual site. Maybe start with reading new books, learn new skills, join new communities. There's a lot of way for you to start, but there's nothing's gonna change until you take your first actions. Remember that we don't know exactly what we want in life. We don't know what we don't know until we have the blueprint on our hand. Okay, so to grab up the whole long videos, just one one statement: stop thinking, start actioning now. And I hope you guys enjoy the videos. If you like these videos, don't forget to hit the like buttons, the subscribe buttons, and the bell. Turn on the notifications. I love you guys so much, and hope you guys have a wonderful days. See you in the next videos.